Yo, 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 people. It's Remy here from the X's and O's team. And I'm out at today with Hertfordshire's finest, <laughs> Jay Jackson. What are you saying, bro? Nothing much, nothing much. Just doing what we can in this, this climate at the moment. I thought you, man. How you been keeping? I've been keeping good, you know. You just keep yourself busy. You try and do like, different sort of conditioning work, stuff that you don't usually do or don't usually pay attention. I thought you. To. I thought you, man. So tell us, how did you get into American football? So my, my story is a bit, a bit unorthodox. Like, I didn't really follow American football until I got to like university levels. Yeah. Um, I always had an uncle, bless his soul, that always pushed me to, to try and get into it. He's like, oh, you want to be a wide receiver, you know, the, the sort of flashy moves and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Tried out a wide, wide receiver my second semester of university, so quite late in. Um, they said, nah, it, it takes too long for you to learn the roots, all sorts, go straight to D-line, and that's where I've been pretty much since. Wow, man, that's interesting still. Um, mm. Always interests me the different pathways that like, people find into the sport. Definitely. Me so, taking it seriously as well only came on like the back end of that so finishing my final year at university i started taking it very seriously and push push through and then such and then really over like, the last two years is when i started picking up um working more in the gym making sure i'm getting my condition right make sure my body's right my yep. mentals are right everything man. i see so off that like how long have you been playing like so now this year is what well, it's 2020 now right i started in 2016 so four years now four, four years, years until five yeah? years all right, building it, building that CV, yeah. Oh, of course, man. I um and during these four years, can you tell me what teams have you played for? So I started out with the Harvestshire Hurricanes. Right. I then moved. I, I then for some of I played for London Blitz for two seasons, and I'm now currently playing for the Hertfordshire Cheers. Okay, so you've been at some seasoned teams, like because Hertfordshire Hurricanes. That's that's one I've heard a lot about. Yeah. Um, Trying to think, you guys' main rivals are the Birmingham Lions, am I correct? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Birmingham Lions were definitely our main rivals. So, bro, tell yourself. me about that because a man's always hearing, yeah, Birmingham, Hertfordshire, it's yeah. a madness. Like. It's always a big, a massive rival, rivalry, no matter which play, that sort of place that we play at, yep. be it Hertfordshire or at Birmingham itself. I remember Birmingham Explosions event, events. If we, if we get caught in an explosion event, oh. Thousands of their supporters heckling on the sidelines and all sorts. I mean, Jeez. if you're not switched on, it can get into your mentals. But we go out, we show out where we can and all sorts. I think my final year, we had like they had like two explosions because they unveiled their new field and all sorts. So right, right. we had a load of people. Unfortunately, we lost, but we definitely went out and showed them like we're not a team to be played with. You lot out there, yeah? Of course, man. Uh, the listen, case. the next time you lot play, mm -hmm. you'll have to get around there, man. <laughs> so, man, um, off that, like. We talk a lot on the podcast about Div 1, like, yeah. you now that I've got someone here in the flesh, tell me, what is the level of football like in that division and that, can you lot hang? So I feel like it mirrors a lot of what Britball is at the moment, where you have some guys that will take it very seriously. There's quite a few guys on the team that will take it extremely seriously. You have some guys that enjoy the sport itself and some guys that just want to get active. And I feel like the balance of that is a little bit more to the wayside when it comes to Div 1. Right. Not I wouldn't necessarily say for my team, but I've, I've seen it in other teams and from experiences from other guys, some of the other guys that have played these teams, you can see where the, the, the effort is. Like I'm not going to name any teams, but I've come mm -hmm. against teams that don't even do that like, film. They don't video their own games and such. Oh, so it's like, how are you supposed to get better? But obviously looking at the difference between Prem, Uniball and, and, and Div 1, you can see that there's a slight disparity between the two. Right, for and sure. The idea, the idea for me and what, what I'm trying to do with my team is to try and bridge that gap, especially push us to the top. Definitely. I see, man. That's, that's interesting. Um, so, seeing as we're on the topic of the level in Div 1 and whatnot, mm -hmm. are there guys in Div 1 that can make GB? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Most definitely. I mean, we have guys in Div 1 that have, that, that have been chosen to move to my team as well. That are playing, that have played in GB in the, in the right. I now. see. Because yeah, we were, I think we were talking. So it's cut you in. Was it? I'm trying mm. to think what topic was is like trying to think about what recruitment pool GB should be like taken from. Yeah, a lot of people were saying potentially that um, GB should only be um, recruited from Prem. from the Premiership. Uh, what do you? What's your take on that? Um, I understand the push for that because I guess it's it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to scout from the Prem. You have the, I, again. I'd say quite a few of the guys in Prem are taking the football seriously. They're taking the, the sport itself seriously. Right. So I understand where they come from with that, but to completely omit Div 1 and even Div 2 teams, because remember like 
right now it's sometimes just due, due to geographical location that quite a few teams will, might get one star player or someone that's actually taking it seriously. Now if someone lives down, I don't know, in Hastings or Portsmouth and, and such, um, they might not get, get that chance to come and play for the London Blitz, London Warriors, um, Tamworth or, and what's, uh, what have you. So I, hear that. I feel like to omit is, is, is not, not really fair, but maybe to take, maybe I think the next step you could take references from coaches, see, see game, game film of these individual players itself as well. Right. To sort of evaluate them a little bit better, but that's, that's only my take on it. What's your favourite football move, bro? Favourite football move? Yeah. As a pass rusher, I mean, naturally, because I've got quite long arms. Yeah. Long arm is See my See that point, reach, fam? <laughs> so that reach is nice, but I'm not going to lie, the, the best one is, is the spin move. Like, I think spin, yeah? The last game, one of the last games I played on against Birmingham Lions again. Jeez. <laughs> I, I, hey. I performed one spin move at the goal line and managed to nab up the, I think, nab up the running back. I was happy with that one. But yeah, I say spin move. It's the flashiest. Well, the coaches hate it because you're turning your back to the play. Again. Yeah, it's perfect timing, isn't it? Mm. But if you're pulling that off, hey, do your thing, my guy. Definitely, man. All right, so I saw that you went out to Europe. Um, I think you, you went to a tryout at uh, Dusseldorf Panther. Yeah. Like, did you see a change in the level while you was out there? Like, what was that like? I think the most noticeable change that I noticed was the conditioning. The right. level of fitness that the guys have over there are, is unpar like, like, to be honest, it is parallel, but they take their, their strength and conditioning very seriously. And the sort of, and the level of strength and conditioning that they do is, I haven't seen it in the UK thus far. I see, so. Going to physical level, I feel like it's, if, if you're determined, mm -hmm. when you go out there, you can ball out. Like easily, like you, you, again, you have to push up your strength. Make sure you're getting in the gym, doing the right type of work as well. Mm -hmm. But you could definitely ball out. I went out there and I, I wouldn't, I, I don't toot my own horn. I'm just trying to keep it humble because it is a humbling experience. But I was able to compete. And yeah, I, you I, held your own. I got you. It was, got you. It, was a, it was a good experience, man. Yeah, that's good to hear, man. Because you got a lot of like guys be thinking, oh, I want to go play out in Europe. Yeah, don't know what it's like. Um, what's your favorite football memory? Favorite football memory? I think so that's. What, Again, thus far, um, I have two. So there's one a little bit more personal. So winning my defensive MVP trophy in my final year at uni. Yeah, that was that with, was, the, that was, with the Hurricanes, yeah? Yeah, that was a great accolade because I remember I was, I was actually standing the year before at our awards evening with one of my teammates, Kyle. Right. Wide receiver. Is that Jovia? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Right. I was standing with him and I didn't, get, I didn't get any form of award. And I turned around to him and I said, next year I'm getting something. So I, I walked out with the defensive MVP mm -hmm. as well as the most injured award so <laughs> it comes Jeez. in it comes in hand man I you're working you. hard you get beat hard I hear know? you I hear you man so, great power great and then this, I think this, um, the second experience was probably going to the finals with Blitz in my first year yeah just seeing what like, having that taste of what like that sort of limelight was being on that big stage as big as, as small as it was it's still a bigger stage to what you're playing on a normal Sunday game so definitely that. being in that environment that definitely propelled me towards playing more football and taking it a little bit more seriously so what that was um, in the final? Do you guys play um, Tamworth? It was Tamworth, Tamworth yeah. in the finals. I think that was twenty. I'd say that's 2017. 2017, Yeah, it was. Should we have imports in the British league? I mean, I'd I'd say yeah, it's good to welcome them. I wouldn't say to completely bar them from playing the, playing football, but I feel like for the UK, we're still quite in our fledgling stages. Quite a few other other sort of leagues out there, they have the ability to pay players and they've, they've got the proper support and sponsorship. So I feel like we should really focus on developing our play before we start thinking of, uh, we're going to bring out these players to push us up. Because I mean, titles are great, but if we're ever going to try and push football in the UK to a better level, we need to also rely on what we have, have, have here. So yeah, I no. feel like a nice balance of them at first would be great, but try not let it, let it be a case where Americans or Canadians are coming over and taking over the, the, the full spot because then we, we, won't, we won't benefit as well from, from that I think. Yeah I hear that man because yeah. um, even the European countries I've gone to a lot of other people come back with their answers saying like yeah as long as it doesn't you know overshadow the talent that's there yeah people they can only to. learn like you know the knowledge can only filter through but unfortunately yeah, like even even going over speaking to some of the co um, speaking to some of the coaches not necessarily with Panthers but in, in some of my other conversations even when it comes to like paying athletes over there, mm -hmm. they're very specific to keep. Okay, EU imports get this amount, but the US and, and Canadian import get this amount. Yep. We need to try and bridge that gap. Exactly. So I think definitely pushing the pushing sport in the UK, getting us to a point where where we're recognised and we can start actually balling out. But there have been stages towards that. Definitely with the CFO draft coming through, and other opportunities through like the NFL. I think it's the international program mm -hmm. as well. So those two definitely help us. Right, man. So, um, outside of football, my guy, mm? who are you? So, outside of football, 
Me, I'm a biochemistry, I'm a biochemistry graduate. Yo, <laughs> I swear the last person I interviewed, swear that. Like, say no more, man. Yeah, so I'm a biochemistry graduate. I'm a, I'm a very big family man. Yeah? Like, really, realistically, my push for playing American football and taking it seriously is to change my sort of family scenario. I'm not in a bad, I'm nowhere in a bad scenario with my family. Mm -hmm. we're, we're quite, we're quite in a, we're in a quite good position. If I do say so myself, but to take some pressures off my parents, make sure my siblings are able to live good and, 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 and sort of strive for it, as well as nieces and nephews, man. For the hey. family push, I feel like that's a match, man. Definitely my biggest motivator. Hey, yo, hear that, man. Got the brains in the brawn. <laughs> family man We're out here. Hey, Jay, appreciate you for coming out here today, no my worries, G. Man. Um, wish you the best of luck in all your endeavours, and we'll Same catch you out soon. Man.